So good evening, everyone. It is Friday, uh, October 14th, and uh, this is your Friday night live update. Just after, since we're starting a few minutes late, um, I we will be ending uh, before nine because I have another meeting at nine o'clock. Um, we are uh, still helping the Delaware retirees get their lawsuit off the ground. Um, it was filed, and and so now they're needing some assistance, like uh, we were in the early stages of our case to try to do some fundraising. So keep those Delaware retirees in your thoughts, and. Um, and uh, so I'm gonna, I will exit just to be able to be able to help them. Um, so uh, anyway, we do, we need to catch up from Wednesday because Wednesday was pretty exciting. <laughs> uh, so Michelle and I were in Manhattan uh, with a couple of our lady warriors from our uh, city council warrior group. And, um, and a lot of you, uh, I'm going to estimate there was probably about 300 people there or close to 300 people, right? I'm saying at least 300 people, my ballpark estimate. I, I, I just know that I only looked down one end of the block and it was like halfway down and I couldn't even get half all the way down the block. So. Well, and, and the crowd was on both sides both sides of the city hall entrance going just about down to the corners on both sides and and everyone was just trying to get you know as close as they could then uh uh that everyone was starting to walk around the block and came back to the other side so it, it was uh absolutely it was absolutely cool um but uh i i think that uh i know the article that came out in the daily news estimated about 100 it was way more than 100 people because i think the plumbers alone were about 100 people yeah i know <laughs> <laughs> those guys rocked everybody rocked but uh, no, that, that, that was great yeah um so yeah totally totally exciting to see you know to, to see that kind of crowd um and thank you to the plumbers that were there so we do have a few shout outs for thank yous there were several unions that were there. There was the parks unions that were there. Um, there, uh, there was uh, the corrections captains union was there that we didn't even know that they were there because they didn't come up to say hello because we would have shouted out and given them our love, of course, given them the microphone, but they didn't show up. Um, there was uh, Kyle Simmons from local, oh, I'm gonna screw this up, 924. <laughs> Uh, there were a few other other locals there. Help me out here. The plumbers local one. Uh, sanitation uh, was there. Sanitation. Um, yeah. There was the DC thirty several DC thirty seven locals. The DC thirty seven retirees were there. Yes. Um, who else? A UFO. Uh, the, um, the the fire, firefighters. The, yes, the firefighters were there. Um, yep. Some there were some police. Wasn't there some police? Some uh, police retirees. Um, it, well, I remember too that day was also the annual Memorial Day for the fire department. So fire, uh, all the FDNY uh, organizations were at the memorial. So we would have had a larger attendance from them. Um, then we probably would have taken both sides of the street and down the block if all the fire groups came. But we did have a lot of fire retirees that did come. So we do thank them for showing up. Um, but it it was uh, it was great, and then we were taking a break, and the plumbers were like, "Hell no, let's go down and bug Mike Mulgrew." So let's go walk down the block. So they didn't want to wait till three thirty. They just said, "We're going. You coming?" As where Michelle and I were like, "Okay." <laughs> yeah, we just start trugging down the block. <laughs> so we did. We went down the block and um, uh, went to UFT headquarters and. And started chanting down there and, and protesting with our signs. And then Michelle calls me and says, Hey, uh, you know, As some of a, right. So there was a retiree that grabs me and says, Hey, come here. He goes, You know, you could walk through this building. And I'm like, What do you mean? He goes, Yeah, just walk right in. And I'm like, Okay. And then he goes, Yeah, there's there's some delegates going in the back door. And I'm like, What do you mean? So Walk me in, went down the escalator. They were going in the back door and through the freight elevator. So then I called her. So go ahead. <laughs> so she's guiding me through the building and I'm on the phone. And she's like, just walk up to the elevator. Just keep on walking. Okay, now go down the elevator. And I'm like, there's another entrance. And Michelle goes, yeah, they're using the freight elevator to get into the building as to not have to go into the front door and see everybody. So we just brought a small contingency around the block. and. And then, holy cow, like we're, we were just 
you know, more focusing on the people walking in. We didn't even notice that Alan Klinger, the attorney for the MLC and the UFT, walks out of the building and Michelle's going, wait, you, you. I'm like, stop stealing money. I'm like, stop stealing money. Uh, stop stealing our retiree benefits. It was hysterical. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And like, he just kept on walking and wasn't even looking back. He was like, I don't know how I got out of there. <laughs> it was kind of funny. Um, so then we come around front and we hear that supposedly Governor Hochul was supposed to be there. But we were waiting and it was 4.30 and the meeting started and we're just getting really tired. And I know Tom, th thank you, Tom, for you coming out and, and you know, your dad being there. And Oh my goodness. So it, it was just an amazing, crazy day. And then we leave and, um, and one of the retirees dropped me and Michelle off at the train station so she could go back home and I could get to the airport. And, uh, and then we find out that Kathy Hochul did show up to the to the retirees meeting and we missed her. And so we were like, damn, we were really close. Who knows? She might have been in the building already. I have no idea, but we didn't see security anywhere. So maybe she showed up afterwards. Maybe they were waiting for us to leave for her to come in. I, I, I think so, because I saw somebody walking and scouting with the walkie talkie, like security early at oh, like okay. four o'clock. And then I didn't see him no more. And then I think they probably waited. Right. <laughs> and I saw one helicopter fly over. So we did have a few people give us donations. And so thank you for all of that. People kept coming up and hugging us and saying thank you. And um, uh, it was it was a it was a pretty nice day. So that was our uh, that was our roundup. Um, and on that note, I want to read a little a little disclaimer because not only was that event live streamed, it was, you know, recorded and live streamed and there was a million photos, you know, taken of it. Of course, there were plenty of people, there were a couple organizations that we did this together. And um, while you always have to remember something and, and, and Michelle can tell you this too, because we always talk about coordinating, working with other organizations, other people, and, and, and we all have difference of opinions, different politics, different everything, right? And, you know, our mantra is always that we all have a lot of things in common. We're all retirees. We're all having to fight to keep our benefits and we wanna maintain what we earned. All the other stuff. And that's why we always say we keep politics off this page. It's because we are entitled as everybody here is entitled to their opinions. But when we're working together on something, we need to only speak to what we have in common as to not get into all these other ancillary arguments because that's where we then become divisive. So oh, at the event, there was another organization that we were working with that started to talk about talking points that were their personal points and not the points of this organization. And you also have to remember, we are working on our nonprofit, our 501c3, and that we have to maintain specific, um, need to cloud out the other stuff that we're not supposed to do. So when I say this uh, statement, what I'm going to say is, um, you know, the opinions spoken of other people are that content is solely the opinion of that author and not the opinion or the beliefs of this organization necessarily. And so we choose to keep our issues focused on retiree health care benefits, period, not not all this other stuff. So when you hear in those other videos, some of the other comments made by that other organization or other individuals that were given the microphone, um, you will probably see Michelle and I's heads explodes in the background <laughs> because that was not supposed to happen. Um, that said, uh, that is our disclaimer. So please don't get upset at us because we had no idea those messages were coming. Um, and one of the one of the actually several people came up to us afterwards and said, "We're really glad you don't have a poker face." I said, "Thank you," because <laughs> that is something I just cannot master. <laughs> right, Michelle. So, oh yeah, no. you know. <laughs> and then it was funny because then my phone my phone lit up, and by the time we were headed back, I we I finally got it into into uh, the train to my next stop, and then to the airport um, because we had so many people that were reaching out to us, going, "I don't even have to tell you. I saw your face. I know how you feel. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry." But you know, we got it. Don't worry about it. Um, but that said, um, that's the poop on that. Um, so that takes care of that. Uh, also, 
we have our very first union making a donation to us. I am so excited. Uh, and they haven't replied back as to whether I can announce it. But yes, we were told by their business manager that we will be receiving a sizable donation from their union. Um, and they are the first union to send us a donation. So I am hoping that by next Friday, uh, if they don't answer me tonight, uh, that we can announce who that union is. Um, so we are sending lots of, lots of gratitude and loves and hugs because that was a very nice gesture. Um, so that's two. What else you got? Um, we didn't hear from our winner last week, which the initials were MP. No, it was not Marianne. <laughs> The joke was before the Zoom started. I said, "Why didn't you?" Wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> um, it wasn't me. They, right. <laughs> no. uh, this week's winner is uh, S M. So we thank you for your donation, and you are the winner that was picked by our treasurer. So S M, okay. you will Got be uh, getting an email from uh, Madeline and. Uh, get back to her so we can know if we can announce your name next week on the live and if not don't worry <laughs> but i want to make sure that you get your uh your prize all righty and thing and thank you so yeah that was about it so i think that's all i got because i can't remember what else i, if I was supposed to say anything else but so now we're open to questions before we have to go so um questions coming Anyone's got questions? All right, we got outstanding on the first union. Uh, hooray for that union, wonderful. Anybody have any questions? Hey, Carol, we totally get it because Michelle and I were, even by 2.30, Michelle and I had been on our feet since, well, I was up early and I'm sure she was too because we both had to be on a seven something. I was on a 7.30 flight and I think you were on a 7.30 train or something, right? So uh, six, yeah, I was on the 655. I had to leave the house at five because I had to, I had to drive to all, well, 530, I had to drive to Albany. So it was a long day for us. And by 2.30 in the afternoon, both of us were struggling when we went across to go get lunch, <laughs> just walking down to the restaurant and then walking up the stairs. Then we were seated to have our lunch because we said, let's just sit like human beings. And then we, our bodies just didn't want to get up. So yeah, no. it was, uh, you know, while we love doing this stuff, it it totally takes a lot out of us. And then that was only 2.30. We still had a couple more hours to go at the rally at UFT. And then we had to get, you know, try to work back, get back home. And then no matter how much I try to get out of New York, it always wants me to stay. <laughs> <laughs> I chose an early flight so I wouldn't be stuck if my last flight out of New York left. I got canceled or whatever like the last few times and this was an earlier flight it was 8 30 or eight o'clock i forget what time it was and still we're getting close i'm like hallelujah we're on the runway this is going to be good and then all of a sudden the plane shut down it was the craziest thing so the the tow bar pulling the plane broke off and whacked the engine the whole plane rocked side to side and then that was it everything just powered down very bad and we yeah. sat there for an hour and I ended up staying the night unfortunately <laughs> then I had to get off the next morning then that flight was delayed because they couldn't find fuel it was just a train wreck so we got from Michael boy I'd love to know forensically the long-term history and internal accounting of the stabilization fund and who did what with it and why wouldn't we all we filed a FOIL request on that and it got denied. And then they told us we should file it with OMB and OLR and they're not answering us either. Um, so when you get it, so will, when I get it, so will you. <laughs> Gerald had a question. Was that Gerald's question? Yeah, uh, no, that was Michael Antwerp. Um, Gerald asked, hold on, I was back before. Uh, Marianne, you said we might move our cause to New York State politicians for years. There's been a bill to grandfather health insurance plans for New York State municipal workers. Might we move that path if necessary? 
Say, read that again. Okay, Marianne, you said we might move our cause to New York State politicians. For years, there has been a bill to grandfather health insurance plans for New York State municipal workers. I guess you maybe meant New York City. Might we move that path if necessary? Um, Gerald, if you're saying that there is currently a bill in the state legislature, please email it to us because I'm not familiar with a bill. The one bill that I am familiar with is um, passed the assembly, didn't pass the Senate, and it was to um, protect a diminishment of health benefits. But in, an, in a conversation with the assemblyman's office that uh, was the sponsor on that, it is only for state employees and some city retirees. It's not sufficient. And if it doesn't get gets pulled in, um, actually that bill needs to be resubmitted in January because it didn't pass the Senate. Um, so uh, yes, I believe we are going to have to do something um, on the state level, uh, but we have just a little bit of time to work on that. And we are actually working on that with the state union as well to do this in solidarity. All right. Um, Tom, Chris, Tom, what's our next staging? <laughs> Tom's ready for war. Him and his dad. That's what he said. So are we looking at the other right? What's our next staging? Um, so so let us recover from this one. We know we have. Um, actually, I do need to reach out. We need to find out from the attorneys about the hearing. If in fact a uh, court is court is um, open to the public and then we will put that out. So give me till um, Monday. Uh, it's still on my to-do list to reach out to the attorneys. The appeal is October 27th and I believe oral arguments should start between two and four. We have not been pegged a specific time. How many unions are not part of the MLC? You know, Tom, that's a really good question because we foiled that from the city as well. We asked them how many unions are part of the MLC and they said it was a secret. So I can't tell you how many unions are, are not part of it. I can tell you that on that vote the other uh, last month, there was 102 unions that were called, but I can't tell you how many aren't in it or that should be in it or that were in it and chose to get out of it, but I will tell you getting out of the MLC is only that you don't pay union dues to the MLC. You don't pay a due to the MLC, you are still bound to their decisions. So this is why you would have heard us encouraging the unions if you, that don't like the weighted, the weighted vote that happens there. So one vote for every 250 people. And obviously we learned from reaching out to all of these locals that uh, basically, it really is just DC 37 and the UFT. They really don't even, from what we're told this past week, right? It, they don't even need Harry or, or, or Greg or anything, that the two of them could pretty much decide to do whatever the hell they want to do. So if the unions don't like that, what we basically told them was just stop paying union dues. Eventually, the MLC is going to feel the pinch because then they're not going to be able to pay the lawyers and they're not going to be able to pay their consultants and all this whatever other shenanigans that they do. And then they'll finally maybe decide that they need to have a better weighted, a better decision that they need to have, uh, rather than this weighted vote, have one union, one vote. And it would be more equitable, more democratic. And they also need to change the way that they do these votes and conducting these things because the unions don't even know what the hell's going on and neither do their people. And so now we're hearing like, of course, on my private page, my private Facebook page, um, you you will will see that I have made some which I needed to put it on my page because I could make these posts public, whereas on the organization page these posts would stay private. And of course we had Michelle's union, uh, the president, you know, said some stupid shit in his union meetings that got back to me. Where not only was he attacking me, he was telling people not to listen to what we're saying because the only thing I wanted was a seat at the table. I'm like, at what table? I don't, I don't need a seat at your table. I don't need to be collectively bargaining. What would I have to bargain anyway? And you want to talk about it like ignorant, off, ignorant union officers that don't even know that a retiree has no rights to collective bargaining. I mean, it's just. What, what would you like me to bargain? You're only allowed to bargain for wages, hours, and work conditions. I'm retired, man. I don't have wages. 
I don't have hours and I don't have a work condition. What's left? Nothing. And I'll have even less of nothing if you keep you know, negotiating away my benefits. So, so him spreading all of this stuff and then telling his retired, telling his active employees that the Medicare Advantage plan is the best thing since sliced bread. And of course he had to vote for it because bad things would happen. Oh, and he even told his people yesterday that if they didn't do this, that all of them would be forced into a hip HMO. So I said, really? They'd be forced into a hip HMO? When was that gonna happen? Did you hear that, Michelle? <laughs> this is what this is what putting putting in those changes that they want to put in place would mm -hmm. end up encouraging because that would allow the MLC, which is really just Michael and Henry, to decide what plan he wants to stick people in. Right now, they can't do that. And according to the 1992 MLC agreement, all of these things have to be negotiated by the MLC in the city. By now allowing that to happen, then you're allowing these two unions to be able to peg whatever plan that they want to, to any class of individuals. So, my page, on my private page, I've made these videos public. Feel free to share them to your friends, locals, unions, union members, active workers, whatever, because I bet you your unions are saying the same crap. Um, so that's that's got to stop. Some shine on everything will it will you know kill all germs because it's just this just getting crazy. Now they're getting so desperate because they don't want to have to reach into their own pocket for not pushing back on what the MLC did. You see, and this I think turns into the larger issue. The larger issue is the unions that have no real voice because of this weighted voting system could have joined a coalition together and pushed back on the MLC hierarchy and said, we're going to change this because it's not equitable. And why should two guys have the ability to make these decisions? But they're not. They're just letting it happen and being steamrolled, right? Right. All right, hold on. Okay, so you have Syfy, news. Go ahead. Right, so Saifi said, I have Medicare and GHI senior care. My quarterly statement is showing GHI CBP employee 1047 monthly. Is that from the monthly cost option rider? I have the family plan. Where is that question? It's back a little bit. That's right before Scott Whitaker says, can we tar and feather like the old days? <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I must have missed that one too. I don't even know where I am. Read it to me again. Okay. I have Medicare and GHI senior care. Okay. The, quarterly, the quarterly statement just came out from NICERS. And it's showing that GHI CBP employee, and it says 1047 monthly. Is that for the monthly cost? or the option rider, she has the family plan. 1047 so, as in 1047? No, $10.47. For the for GHI the, rider. Yeah, for the family plan. Now, that's the same amount, Marianne, that I pay for Jason and I. That's the same that says in my quarterly statement too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, did, she, did she say she was married or a domestic partner? No, she might. Saifi, you're going to have to send an email to the org address and let us know that information. Yeah, I need to know the status. Oh, uh, your your status is it a is it a um, is it a domestic partnership? Is it um, um, are you married? Do you have to, oh, how many dependents? Give us all those details and then your contact info because if we can't figure it out, we'll have to call you and ask. Yeah. Let's see, scrolling down. Oh, my girl, Antra asked, how did you get to be so brilliant? What's your secret? I'll have to, I'll have what you're having. You're a walking encyclopedia. All right. Yeah. Ellen. Cliff Clavin of retiree bullshit. Yep. <laughs> All right. Ellen, do you know why OSA's Megan W. called me earlier this week for your contact info for Bob Crow? Yes. Oh, we, yes, it was a real surprise for me. So weird as you have had phone calls with him. Oh, was that? Okay. 
Yeah. Um, actually, I wasn't really sure how they knew we were connected, but that's okay, um, because um, evidently the OSA watches our videos, um, which is, I'm excited about that because I'm glad some unions are actually watching our videos, but um, he did get offended about something that I said, and then so we had to talk it out. And um, like I usually do, um, when I'm correct, even if someone doesn't like my opinion, if I'm correct, I take the opinion that I'm correct and I'm going to stand by my conviction and I'm not going to change my opinion just because um, there's no other alternative. And that was, that was basically, that's basically what I said. Um, I'm, I'm staying to my convictions. These are my opinions and, um, and I'm sticking to them. And I would rather come out on the right side of something than join a bunch of people just because there's nothing else left on the table. And I would rather, you can tell Michelle, at Michelle would confirm this, she and I and Madeline and Ralph will usually stay up till late at night, many a night, every day, all the weekend, whatever, to try to brainstorm to come up with where we could find something, what else we could do, what, how, what else we could figure out to, to resolve an issue. We just don't accept, well, there is no plan B. We want to walk away from that meeting with a plan B, C, D, and E. Um, so that to me is not acceptable. And if you've been a union leader for 20, 30, 40 years, well, damn it, you better be able to have a damn idea because you've been around long enough, you should have come up with something. But the larger issue was that regarding the union vote, the MLC vote, that none of the unions, oh, I should say that. There were unions that disagreed with with the the, um, expediency in which this was going through the council and they wanted to hit the pause button and they were overruled but there wasn't anything else done to speak out even at the vote to say to say to the other unions uh, we don't agree with this being done this way although I will tell you that there were several unions well actually you could go and listen um, we did post that on our Facebook page didn't I I believe so. The MLC meeting. Go to the MLC meeting. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go to the MLC meeting. You'll hear several unions did speak out against it. Um, and what we are also learning and has been reported uh, to the international um, was that proxy votes were misused. And that's also being reported. Um, so give us some time because not all this is going to come out, um, be right. hashed out overnight. Right. So, so yeah, that explains that, Ellen. So Tom Tuna says, hopefully the union who made the donation will allow it to be made public. So other unions will see it is okay to take a stance publicly for their members. I hope so too. I have to ask permission. It's just the right thing to do. Right. We're waiting. We're waiting. Yes, Patricia. Usually they start at eight thirty. We had to start a little earlier because actually we're gonna we're gonna have to wrap this up. Marianne has a meeting at nine o'clock. So, uh, yes, Ellen, I do know about that UFT thing. I need I need a little time uh, to go to go through it, like we did the last uh, UFT bullshit debunking. And trust me, it's coming. Uh, the PBA. You know, Scott, I, if Scott, if you're a PBA, I really need you to pressure um, Pat Lynch to come out with us. We are trying to coalition build. He needs to speak out with the other unions and join the join with his own voice. I'm going to need that. And and he hasn't yet answered back. I've called Dave Nicholson and Dave Nicholson has not called me back again. So not by lack of trying. And this is why I know all you guys are getting frustrated and emailing us, telling us that you think that these unions that don't are not communicating with us, that their no vote was just some symbolic vote just so that they didn't get attacked by their own union members. Um, eventually that will fetter itself out as well. Because if they're not speaking out, they're not engaging their active union members to speak out either, and they're not joining us to, to fight this, then their no vote was really symbolic and had no weight. Tom, I don't know if there's other protests yet coming up. We'll definitely let you know. Yep. 
You're welcome, Peggy, and thank you. Yeah, I know, Michael, I was actually, you and I had spoke about that. We were, we're wanting to determine if the weighted vote for the UFT actually includes the, the uh, retirees. That's a really good question. I don't know the answer to that. Sam, I don't think, um, Sam, Ted, I don't think I saw that in the New York Times. So if you can email us that article, it would just make it easier. Yeah, I lost messages here. <laughs> <laughs> Janet says my videos on my personal page are astounding, outstanding. It's because I can really speak freely and, and my messages are very targeted where I can't really do that in the organization page. That's why I always tell people, keep your personal and your business separate. Um, uh, and also, it also allows uh, on my personal page to be shared, um, those messages to be shared, where the private page, you can't make things public. Is it possible for a legit union to be organized for retirees? I, yeah, you asked that question before. I saw that on the page briefly. Um, so unions don't really, I don't want to say we should be able to union, not union, well, we can't bargain, there's no bargaining for us, but I think what this organization has built is exactly that. We've become that pseudo union. Um, we, we help you with everything the union should be helping you with when most of them don't, even the city agencies don't. I think we kind of got that. I don't know. <laughs> Like our, we're on a mission from God. Excellent work, you all. <laughs> City council people have the same health insurance. Yes, they do. Mm -hmm. And that's why I don't understand why they don't get it. Thanks for the link, Ted. I'll look at that. Is there a way to share the videos on your private page besides using Facebook? Um, or do you have YouTube versions with links? So Janet, let me know because it is a public video and I don't think you have to have Facebook in order to see those videos, but sometimes I share them on my Twitter and I also share them on um, my LinkedIn. So if you can't access them, log out, of, log out of your Facebook and then try to click Facebook and find me and see if you could see my videos. If you can't, let me know and then I'll make sure instead of doing them like as a live reel or whatever that I upload it as a video and then try to upload them um, as a short video into YouTube or something. So tell me if that Facebook link, log out of your Facebook, click my, my, my profile and see if you can watch my videos and let me know what that looks like. Joseph Kevin Lyle said, my fellow teachers told me that Mulgrew lied to the entire delegate assembly. I know that is no surprise, but it shows you that we are still debunking the myth. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. All right, we're gonna have to start to- Yeah, I got 15 minutes. Um, yeah. Well, you know what I chalked that up to, Ellen, is just smart women. We tipped our hand. <laughs> what time do these meetings start? Usually they start at 8.30, Patricia, but I've got a meeting at 9 to help the Delaware retirees. Right, and I put a message in there, and I said, usually, like, you know, start checking out, like, 8.15, because sometimes we flux, you know, give or take, you know, life gets in the way. <laughs> Anything else? Do we miss anything else? No, I think we scrolled down most of it. Just emailed Dave PBA, asked them to join the coalition against the cities because I'm at towards the end. Cities proposed change. Okay. Tell everybody in the phone. Yeah, call. COVID doesn't answer me either, Al. They never, they'll never respond. 
Um, Benny, Benny's got his head up his rear end. The union head on the MLC audio recording who said he had no idea what the admin code would really got to be so stupid. <laughs> says Lee Blyden, I joined late tonight. Did the city vote to change the administrative? No, no, they did not. They didn't change the administrative code on Wednesday, no. No, yeah, you're absolutely correct on that. That, that didn't happen. And again, as always, you can watch this video on the replay once it's over, in case you missed if you got on late. Yes, and then we'll also upload this to YouTube and uh, link it in the email that we'll send out. Um, so, Tina, I've asked my question twice, but you're skipping my question. Is it not showing up? Tina, I, I don't see your question, so um, okay. ask me again real quick. One here. How can active UFT members support us and get access to what we are doing? How can Sorry. active UFT members have access to what we are doing? Right, so can they join the page? They or? can join our Facebook page. Absolutely, yes. Our moderators do let in active people and it does, and our questions just ask, are you active or retired? They just want, you know, we just want to know, you know, who you are. As you remember, in the beginning, we were looking to keep this just to act, just to retirees. Now we are open to everybody because employees and retirees need to be able to be aware and have this information. On our website, you can they can also join our newsletter list or sign up for our emails. They can make donations. And there is a face, we have a, a website page specifically for uh, employees. It says active worker or something, active employee. So it exactly. introduces right. them to the issue. We know we need to tweak that page a little bit more. So yes, absolutely, thank you. Invite actives, we want them here because we know that their unions are lying to them right now. And not all of them, but we know that some of them are. And I and I don't necessarily think that it's malicious. I just think that they bought hook, line and sinker, the MLC bullshit, and they're passing it along because they believe it. Like we believe the unions. Like we, why should we ever have doubted our unions? We shouldn't be in this situation. But see, they are gonna learn just like we did that they're being lied to. We just picked up on it sooner than they did. We don't know um, when the vote is. We will, as soon as we know, we'll let everybody know because we're gonna want people there when we, when they're gonna vote on 12126. And no, Michael, James Davis of the PSC has not answered me. I have emailed him several times. It, it just ha it hasn't happened. I, I, I honestly don't know why. Please look at William Shenton. Please look at my comment about Medicare open enrollment that starts tomorrow. I, William, we are working on your document. The girls have it, right, Michelle? <laughs> yes, yes. I know Madeline marked it up with her red pen. Yeah, <laughs> so we are going through with it. Give us till like Tuesday yes, to put it put it up. <laughs> right. Fitness City Council take a motion to plus a motion of their meeting at their agenda. So Janet, right now there isn't anything. They they There's a couple of different things that could happen and I, I don't really want to get into all of the details, but um, I think more and more as we're going through this, I'm, I'm having a really good feeling that this isn't going to happen, but the pressure must stay on the council people. They need to keep hearing from you. Uh, email, telephone calls absolutely must hear from you, as well as um, the, the, uh, the, the uh, speaker and um, the chair of civil service and labor. Those communications must continue to happen. So even though we are closed on Monday, on Monday, we will post another post for you guys to keep calling another list. Um, and then we will also include Speaker Adams and Councilwoman Carmen De La Rosa. So please let them know exactly how you feel. And if they don't answer you, just keep calling. We're retired, we got time to be a pest. Okay. So I do gotta run guys. Absolutely Bye. love you. Thank you for everything. Thank you for support. Thank you for the moderators. Thank you for Joe for running our page and dealing with all our crazy images on that truck. <laughs> right. And again, you post your pictures on our page. 
no, I got. I'm gonna post them. I haven't just. I just been crazy busy since I got home and okay. just a lot of nonsense. But again, without your support, you know, we wouldn't be where we're at. And again, very appreciative, moderators, everybody, Joe, we love you guys. And this is, you know, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, that's what, what someone was saying. Well, you know, is it over? Is it over? I said, no, it ain't over till the fat lady sings, and I haven't sung yet. Sorry. So we're good. Yes, right. Oh, listen, <laughs> like, I told, like I said on Wednesday, I'll run them right into the ground. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. So enjoy your weekend, guys. I know I got plans. Finally, I definitely need some R&R, &R, and I hope you guys do too, yes. right? All right. Yeah. Yeah. All righty. Still catching up. All right. Peace, people. Love you. Ciao. <laughs>